Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and having a great Saturday night. Tonight we're going to be talking about the potential for a pretty significant pattern change late next week into next weekend. And we'll be just looking at some of the outlooks and then towards the kind of uh, second half and the kind of latter half of the video, we'll be looking at some of the weather models and just comparing them uh, just a little bit just to get a general overview of this pattern change um, and just seeing what each model has to offer as far as what systems that show and kind of stuff like that but let's go ahead and get into the update so first you're looking at the six to ten day temperature outlook from the climate prediction center here and so as you can see we have a large area of possible early potential below average temperatures into the united states and the only exception to this is in the southwestern united states with a little bit of a chance of above average temperatures there throughout the six to ten day period and now looking at the six to ten day precipitation outlook from the climate prediction center uh, we have a, a potential for below average uh, precipitation values into parts of the central uh, united states and eastern united states and then even into parts of the uh, kind of northwestern and western parts of the states in that area there and then we have that just slight chance of uh, above average above average precipitation excuse me in two parts of the northern sections of the united states and then a small section into southern texas there and that is again for the six to ten day outlook and now looking at the eight to fourteen day uh, temperature outlook here we have the potential for below average temperatures in quite a bit again of the united states um, from the really central u.s all the way into the eastern united states um, could potentially see below average temperatures for the 8 to 14 day uh, period there and then into the western u.s here we'll have that potential for um, above average temperatures there throughout much of the western u.s into the southwestern u.s again for that 8 to 14 day range and then looking at our precipitation outlook for the 8 to 14 day range you'll have uh, the potential for below average precipitation in really much of the uh, United States here with the um, highest chance of below average precipitation into the western U.S. and um, into parts of kind of the Tennessee Valley region there. And then uh, looking here into the northern kind of northern sections into Montana, North Dakota, just that small area of above average precipitation and then again into southern texas and louisiana that chance for above average precipitation there uh, is possible for the 8 to 14 day range and then looking at the three to four week outlook here we have the potential for below average temperatures into parts of the mid-atlantic and northeastern united states and then a potential for above average uh, temperatures excuse me into the western and kind of south uh, central and really southwestern united states for that three to four week uh, range there and then looking at the precipitation outlook here you're going to have above average precipitation possible into the northwestern and north central united states and then you're going to have uh, just that small area of above average precipitation into southern texas and southern or not really but not really southern florida but the peninsula of ford florida there um for that three to four week period and then into arizona new mexico and west texas a potential for uh below average precipitation is possible there for that three to four week range now looking at the gefs ensembles here and just really focusing on the next week and really week and a half. So first starting out, starting out with around now, you're gonna have that uh, area of above average temperatures, really only for a couple days in the central US, and that will continue on to the east as you have this uh, below average air, or not below average air, below average temperatures, excuse me, into um, really Canada and the north central US move in, um, throughout the middle 
early in the middle of the week and that air will kind of move in a little bit and filter into northeastern the northeastern united states and then really by late next week that air is really going to start to rush to the southeast and move in quite fast and then by uh, late next week into next weekend you're going to have again that area of low average temperatures possible into the eastern central and really kind of northwest u.s uh in some areas and then that area of above average temperatures possible in the southwest united states and then as you can see here this area of below average temperatures lasts for quite some time all the way into again um starting really late this uh, next week into this weekend and then this shows up on the GEFS and last really throughout um, the next two weeks almost and again this is kind of getting far out so it is not as reliable but I mean just on the latest GEFS you have cold air uh, colder than average there excuse me uh, remaining into the central and eastern United States all the way throughout um, next weekend into early um, the week after next so that's definitely something to consider there and uh, especially with any systems that can move through you will have the uh, possibility of a snowstorm really if you get a good mix of that moisture from the south and that cold air mixed in um, it's just a pretty good snow maker um, really as we get closer to winter um, and especially for this time of year so first here starting off with the GFS and we'll only go about we'll go, only really go out to about 240 hours out to maybe 200 hours out just because it does get pretty unreliable past that range but um, going to the start of the run here on the 18z GFS you're gonna have um, some snow potentially in the northwestern United States as that kind of atmospheric river event is um, calming down you could say there and you're not going to have that the uh, the widespread uh, rain and moisture flowing into the uh, southwest and northwest united states as you have been the past couple of days so that's a good thing for sure for that area but you're still going to have that potential for snow into some of those areas throughout early next week and then by the middle of next week i'm um, we're kind of watching this system right here that can move through and um could really dump some snow into some of the areas kind of into the great lakes not really great lakes region the ohio valley excuse me into the northeast united states especially towards late next week this could be a significant snow event for the northeast united states as well as sections of maybe the ohio valley again um but again some areas in the Great Lakes region could definitely see some snow but just not as a uh, heavy snow event as the Northeast United States but again that is just the system that we need to start to continue not really start to but continue to watch um, as we get closer to this potential event here and then as you go throughout that run as that system exits the United States you're gonna have more kind of uh, back-end snow that can move in even into the the Great Lake uh, Great Lakes region into the Northeast and Mid Atlantic um, again from the 18z run here. So uh, again, just something to watch as we get that cold air and the system uh, would move through. But uh, the cold air really won't be as far south by this point, and this is going to be the system that really brings this cold air in so uh, you'll have to watch that for your snowfall potential um, and as you can see here's kind of the area of the system and then by that time the, sig the system moves out that cold air really starts to uh, go into and move into the central and eastern United States um, so now looking at the European weather model here and looking at the uh, 12z run here same thing with the european shows that rain and snow moving into the northwestern united states um and then you have kind of a low pressure that forms 
showing up early next week. This really doesn't show up much on the GFS, but it could bring some uh, rain and some snow into northeast United States. Um, but still looking into this system right here, you're going to have that system move through. And this has the system a little farther to the north, or the low at least, a little farther to the north. So the areas in the Great Lakes could receive some more snow depending on how this would play out. And then areas into the northeast could see more of a um, snow to rain event rather than a full-on snow event there. So that system would move out and again back in snow would come with that and just very uh, very cold air would move in after that. So again this is just going to be a system we'll have to watch and see how this would play out. Um, it's going to be kind of a tricky system because you're going to have that cold air just lingering up here and uh, you're going to have to watch how quickly that air is able to move in and that moisture is able to uh, meet that cold air but um, again really that'll be it for this update and we'll I will continue to update y'all on the um, potential system really late next week into next weekend so that's going to be it for tonight's update I really do appreciate all of y'all watching um, I'm going to try to continue to make updates on this potential system throughout the next couple of days and I would say by the middle of next week we'll have a decent idea of where the system might go and who could see the most snow so i'll try to keep some updates coming out i can't promise that though um but as we get closer or really around thanksgiving and a little before and a little after thanksgiving i should be able to make uh, some more updates because i will not have uh, school so i'll have a little more free time to make updates like these uh, but again, I really do appreciate all of y'all who watch my videos, and I hope y'all have a great night.